We are moving on now to the next speaker who is with us via Zoom. So I need to get a little bit of thumbs up from the crew here to make sure that he is with us. Excellent, he is. And the next presentation is from Scandinavia Bi Biogas. And with us from, from this company, we have Matti Viklua. And Scandinavian Biogas is one of the largest private, private producers of biogas in the Nordics. And its mission is to help society achieve its goal, goal of, of course, creating more renewable energy. So here on the screen with us now is the CEO, Matti Viklua from Scandinavian Biogas. Welcome, Matti. Thank you very much. I am very pleased to be able to participate in this uh, Renewable uh, Energy Summit uh, or Renewable Summit uh, overall. Uh, I will try to... Sorry, I am not able to share my screen now. Why is that? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit confused with the technic, technology now, given the fact that I would like to share my screen. Does it work now? I believe that you are seeing my screen now. Yes, we okay. are. Okay, uh, so um, as said, thank you very much for the opportunity to participate in this Renewable Summit uh, meeting. Uh, representing Scandinavian Biogas, CEO. I've been with the company as CEO now around uh, 10 years. And my, my aim is to, to present both the company, but especially the biogas market and the opportunities which we see uh, way forward. Uh, and um, in nutshell, our company was established 15 years back. And, and currently, we are um, our home, home market is the Nordic markets, especially we are operating uh, today in, in Sweden and Norway. We have also some activities uh, in, in Korea, one facility there, but our home market and the growth market is, is uh, the Nordic region. Uh, last year, our total sales was uh, a bit less than 500 million Swedish, and we delivered altogether um, 330 gigawatt hours of, of bioenergy. And uh, what we do, or the product which we deliver, is either the compressed biogas, CPG, or a, uh, the product uh, liquefied biogas, LBG. Uh, the CPG as a product can be used as a vehicle gas on buses and, and uh, uh, personal cars, uh, vehicles. Uh, and the liquid is normally used uh, for heavy trucks and also in the future for maritime purposes. Uh, besides of selling the, the biogas as product, we are also delivering the market with um, a biofertilizer, which means that uh, we can also replace artificial uh, fertilizers with, with uh, green, green uh, fertilizers. And uh, altogether, we are a, li a, a bit less than, than uh, 100 employees. Uh, we have um, total technical capacity is a bit less than 500 gigawatt hours, so we still have room to improve with the existing facilities, but especially we are aiming to, to increase the overall capacity uh, with our investment plan and, and uh, more or less to double the production in, in the forthcoming uh, four years. Company has now been listed on, on the first North Premier in Stockholm since December. So we have been um, a listed company now uh, around uh, three months. Uh, what we are very proud for is that last year we were able, in cooperation with CSER, uh, the independent third party, to do a evaluation on, on our sustainability impact. And we were able to receive the dark green shading, dark green uh, certificate both or for our, our debt capital, uh, debt financing, as well as for, for the equity financing, meaning that we assume that actually we are globally the first one, uh, the first IPO with dark green um, uh, certification for, for uh, equity side. In terms of, that is the company in nutshell, uh, in terms of our industry, I think this is very, very important to understand and what is the overall market where we, in which we work. Uh, the, the raw materials which we use uh, as an industry in biogas production is a very broad one. 
Uh, it's normally organic waste streams. It can be uh, sludge from wastewater treatment facilities, sorted household waste, uh, uh, industrial uh, organic waste, slaughtery waste, uh, pulp and paper mill processed water, um, uh, silage, which is based on dead salmon. It can be also residues from, from the, the agricultural sector, uh, energy crops, which of course not are not, co not very commonly used nowadays, but manure is very, very uh, good uh, feedstock for, for our industry. So the base is, is very, very broad, and that makes it possible for our industry to, to even assure growth uh, longer term as, as the base is, is uh, uh, so broad. We also look for additional uh, new sectors as, as forestry residue, residues, but uh, there's still some, some technological development uh, seems to be needed in order to really make it uh, commercially viable. The, the production process, the main part of it, is, is um, a microbiological process. So no know-how know on how the microbes work and, and what conditions they require is very important, and that is the core of our know-how and competence. In terms of the usage, uh, you can use the biogas as a, as a, as an energy carrier for producing um, power and heat the traditional way. You can clean it, upgrade it, and use it as a vehicle gas, which has been the, the common way in Sweden in the last 10-15 uh, years on cars and buses. And now, given the fact that the technological development has, has been substantial, you, you can also liquefy it by your LNG so that our green energy, green uh, natural gas, becomes a bio LNG product. And that is very, very uh, important for us in order to be able to be competitive in, in such segments as heavy trucks and, and maritime. And then finally, uh, the, the, the bio fertilizer is something which we can uh, use on, on, on the agricultural, uh, for the agricultural purposes. And thus, we are closing the recirculation loop uh, globally. We are focusing as an industry on a green energy with zero additional uh, emissions in the atmosphere. What does this mean uh, for us, the company? Last year, 2020, we, we delivered uh, 350 gigawatts uh, total energy, and, and uh, that is equ equivalent to, to uh, of, uh, 40 million liters of gasoline or equivalent to, to travels uh, between Malmo and Stockholm around 950,000. And uh, the, the total CO2 reduction was close to 90,000 tons or equivalent of the emissions of 30,000 cars each year driving 15,000 uh, kilometers. All this was made possible by organic waste, uh, which we took in, in the range of 270,000 tons. Uh, in terms of the market development, uh, this is a uh, very new information on, from, from Energy Gasvaria and, and, and SAB describing the development on, on the liquid uh, biogas market and liquid natural gas market, uh, for, for especially for, for traffic purposes in, in Sweden. And as you can see that the market was very uh, modest until 2018. But since then, we have seen a, a very fast growing market. And, and last year, we were on a level of 75 gigawatt hours uh, sold um, uh, food and gas, uh, vehicle gas. Uh, and around half of that was, was liquid uh, biomethane. And you see also on the graph on the right hand side that the infrastructure is developing fast. And there are now uh, almost 25. Um, filling stations for, for liquid methane, which is very, very important for, for the logistic service providers so that the heavy trucks can use uh, uh, the, the, the uh, food and gas, liquid food and uh, vehicle gas as, as an energy carrier. This is a sector which is developing very fast, uh, it, not only in Sweden, but uh, in Europe as well. And that leads us to, to this uh, summary slide uh, presenting the estimated development uh, by 2030 on the European uh, transport sector, where the number of different vehicles is assumed to grow very, very fast, and would especially here flag for 
the heavy trucks going from growing from 2,500 to 280,000 uh, units in in uh, in uh, 10 years' time, meaning that around 25% of of uh, uh, heavy trucks in the European uh, roads on the European roads would be uh, using gas. And, and that implies also or requires that the infrastructure development in Europe uh, needs to be assured. And that is something which is also supported by the European Commission Blue Corridor Initiative, which was in initiated already uh, 2014 and has supported the, the, the infra infrastructure uh, development in a material way. So we assume that for the LNG, LBG, the total number of filling stations in 2030 will be around 2,000. What does this mean in practical terms for the biogas market? Uh, the European biogas market is estimated to be around 90 terawatt hours 2030, uh, and, and the Swedish and Norwegian respectively 10 terawatts and, and the Norwegian 5 terawatts. Uh, we, we, uh, the analysis also imply clearly that the, the feedstock is, is, um, uh, is available for, for these production volumes and even for the Swedish case, it is uh, um, up to 15 terawatts given the known technologies uh, and, and, and sources of, of feedstock. Key segments uh, for our industry uh, is, is um, traditionally has been the light vehicles and buses, but now given the technological development for uh, LB, bio LNG production, heavy transportation, industrial customers and shipping are de definitely emerging. Uh, other drivers uh, making this possible is the engine technology, uh, which has made substantial steps uh, in, the last year, uh, in the latest years. So the gas engine uh, on Euro 6 level is, is very, very competitive to, to diesel engine Euro 6 as well, making it very attractive for, for the, the transport service providers to use uh, gas as energy carrier on, on heavy trucks. Shipping, uh, there are the sulfur restrictions uh, in, in globally and especially on, in nearby seas is, is uh, uh, limiting the usage of traditional er energy carriers and, and a large number of ships uh, are converted into LNG, which means that also LBG can be used uh, on those ships. We as a company have already uh, signed agreement with the, with the Norwegian cruise liner Hurte Rutten when they are converting their ships into, into uh, LNG that they will also combine LBG in, in their uh, energy mix. So that was the summary on, on, on the key highlights from the market. And then if I look uh, on our company, key, key points from 2020, as I mentioned, uh, the, the listing of on, on, on First North Premier in Stockholm last year, that was a very, very important step. Uh, altogether, we, we, um, the, the share issue was on a level of 350 million uh, new shares. Uh, we made also two important acquisitions, uh, executed those. Biocraft Holding is, is the company which uh, owns and operates uh, the, the business in, in Norway. We originally had a, a joint venture with Trender Energy as our partner. They converted their stake in Biocraft into Scandinavian biogas shares, so they are now the largest single shareholder in our company. We also integrated ourselves uh, upstreams and we took over the ownership in Ekdalens Biotransporter. It's a company which is specialized on, on uh, business to business uh, uh, organic waste streams uh, transport to, to biogas facilities. And it's, it's a business which uh, we want to expand and definitely not only uh, serving us, but also other players in the market. We signed already a, a long term agreement with an European uh, customer distributor for, for liquid biogas, uh, which we uh, assume to be is assumed to be able to start delivering uh, in a couple of years uh, time. And uh, we had some some uh, operational issues in Skong uh, in, in the Norway, Norwegian facilities, but but those issues have been now resolved with the technology provider and we have been now in, in full full production on, on that facility. COVID-19 had some impact on, on our customers and, and our suppliers, but overall, we would say it's fairly, fairly limited impact. 
we see ourselves as a core player in the infrastructure in, in the society and thus being able to get uh, have a ongoing access to feedstock as well as delivering energy for for our customers and then finally as i mentioned the c zeros uh, dark green shading uh, both for debt capital and and and, and uh, equity capital was achieved last year some key uh, financial highlights our pro forma as i mentioned we took over uh, Ekdalens Biops Transporter, so our operating total operating income, including uh, the Ekdalens pro forma, was uh, a bit more than 450 million Swedish, on the same level as as year before. Uh, EBITDA uh, on a level of a bit more than 80 million, uh, slightly lower than year before, partly related to COVID and partly related to to these uh, maintenance uh, issues we had in in in, in uh, Norway. And then um, overall, uh, the, the um, operative pro forma margin was 22.4%, uh, up from 20.7% last year or year before. Uh, this is an important uh, financial target, uh, as, as uh, our target uh, 2024 is to, to have an operative EBITDA, which is at least 30%. So, uh, given the, the refinancing of our bond, which was repaid last year, uh, February, and given this uh, green shading, we, we have already seen a material reduction in our financial cost last year, but we assume that trend to develop uh, further when, when taking the company forward. Uh, way forward, we are planning to execute four investment projects uh, on three facilities. In Stockholm, we are going to convert part of their, our compressed biogas to liquid biogas. We see that there is a value added uh, having uh, uh, a larger part of the production in, in a liquid format. Market is willing to pay a premium. On the other hand, it's much easier to transport the liquid biogas and, and that therefore we are able to, to uh, even address European customers, not only regional customers, substantial benefit. That's one project. Uh, then in Skogne, which is in, in Norway, which is already world's largest producer of liquid biogas, we are doubling the capacity in two phases. And then in final, uh, the finally, uh, the project in Münsterås, uh, which, which is a project in cooperation with local farmers. They have an issue with their manure and we will use that for, for as, a, as a raw material for biogas production. So that implies altogether that our financial targets is to reach a operating total income at least of 750 million in 2024 and have an operating EBITDA, which is also at least 30% uh, the same year. And during the road there, we will have, an, uh, we will have an, an equity ratio, which is at least 25%. Uh, and on this slide, you have a bit more details on, on, on the project. And I think the key takeaway here is that roughly uh, the in terms of the financing structure, 30-35% of the projects are uh, assumed to be financed by equity, by the equity which we took in in the IPO last year, and, and then around two-thirds by debt capital, and, and, and that is something which is working in progress. Uh, the second point which is important here is that uh, all our investments focus on adding uh, vol LBG volumes, uh, so we are really focusing on the uh, new segments emerging in the market, heavy transportation, shipping, and focusing on the product where, where the uh, premiums are the highest for, for the energy. Overall, this investment pro program has a cost of around 1.1 billion Swedish. 300 is estimated to be um, financed by, by um, debt capital. Uh, sorry, with, with grants. Uh, and, and out of these 300, now more than 200 is already granted uh, 300 will be financed by by equity which we took in last year and then around 500 million is is financed by by uh, debt capital all projects assumed to be commenced uh, still uh, this year or early next year 
So I think that I've now gone through the key points which I had for this presentation. Would there be any, any Q&A? I would be pleased to answer. Thank you, Matti Viklua. Uh, there is much talk about the taxonomy, the EU taxonomy, and also, of course, the str very strong shift in focus in transport to electricity. How does this, these two parameters affect your plans of expansion further? Uh, thank you. Very great question. The taxonomy as such, uh, when, when we made this uh, assessment in cooperation with CICERO, they also made a, a certain kind of a touch on the ta European taxonomy and, and our, our business compared to that. And, 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 and the, 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 the preliminary indication is that we, we should be very well linked and uh, uh, aligned with, with the taxonomy requirements. So we, we, we believe when it's finally freezed and, and will be used uh, to be very well aligned with that. Then related to, to the, the uh, electrification and, and the usage of power in, in transportation, we, we clearly have seen already that uh, for the car segment, uh, light vehicles, there is a, a uh, trend towards uh, electric cars and electric vehicles. And we see that we, we see that biogas will serve that segment also in the future. But, but the main growth is in such segments where, where we have um, competitive advantage for biogas, where, 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 which is therefore our sweet spot. Thank you. And how about aviation? That was not on your list. I mean, we know we we'll probably will be able to fly with electrical planes, well, in a decade um, maybe. But how about LNG uh, for and then biogas transformed to to uh, aviation fuel? It is something which uh, some people within the industry or, or some research institutes have looked at. Uh, it is an option perhaps for future if the technology is, is developed uh, accordingly, but uh, that will be a couple of years ahead. So, so um, uh, possible, but, but not in the near future. So my final question is, where do you see your strongest growth segment? Is it, is it in, in shipping or is it in, in transport, uh, ground transportation? Um, well, that is a very good question. Uh, they are both very important, as well as the industrial customers, but uh, we believe that the industrial customers will come perhaps a bit later on. Um, th this is, uh, I would believe that given the development in the European transportation sector and, and the limited number of, of really good other solutions will enhance and, and, and support the growth, especially in the heavy transportation in the European mm. market. Well, thank you very much, Mati Viklua. Thank you, and have a nice day. Thank you, likewise.